Greetings, fellow humans. I am Hugh. And I am Man. And together we are definitely not two, two kobolds, kobolds in a, a trench coat. coat. We enjoy human activities, such as paying taxes, having existential crises, and RPG horror, horror stories. stories. Let's see what we've got today. First up, we have a DM who ended a couple's marriage, a DM's ex-partner who saw no problem with grooming a child NPCs, and a DM who broke magical items on a nat 5. That time my DMing style ended a marriage, by Reddit user GGM. While it's technically true, the title is a bit of a joking hyperbole, but here's the details. I was DMing a heavily modified 5e campaign over Discord. The players in the story were me, the DM, the wizard, who was technically the match that started the fire, and the husband, who I believe was playing a druid, the wife, who was playing a bard, and the ranger, who was there but not involved. The campaign setup was that the party was hired by the Grand Duke to explore the wilderness of a newly discovered continent and establish a settlement on behalf of the kingdom. It was a highly sandbox game that used a lot of settlement building and exploration rules that I had homebrewed for the game. Everything was going well until at one point during session 9 or 10, the wizard asked the group, do we want to explore the new wilderness region or focus on improving the settlement first? Husband wanted to build a settlement first and wife wanted to explore. They then began to argue very publicly about it on Discord. My big failing was not ending the session immediately, but in my defense, it was hard to tell if the argument was out of character and not just a debate about what to do until it was way too late. I kept trying to get the reins again, but husband was talking about wife's not prioritizing things in life properly, and wife kept saying that husband was always like this. I decided to end the session early, literally only got 30 minutes in when we typically play for three or four hours, but the damage was done. The day following the discussion, I received a message from both husband and wife saying that they'd been fighting about this literally all week and were going to be getting a divorce. They both said that they didn't want to play with the other and had decided to leave the campaign so everyone else could play. At this point, the party was cut in half and the game soon petered out. I know that they obviously had lots of issues outside of the game, but it's still weird that it was my game that was the straw that broke the camel's back. From time to time, when I'm hanging out with my D&D friends, we still bring up that time that my DMing was so bad that it destroyed a marriage. I know OP feels pretty bad about this, but honestly, this is not your fault. The problems in the marriage were clearly already there. It was nothing to do with you or your DMing style. This was on them and they were just in a situation where they had to disagree with each other and they couldn't handle that anymore. This was about their problems outside the table, not about the way you run the game or the way you handle the situation. Well, given some of the comments the husband and wife were making in the middle of that argument, something tells me that this was going way deeper than just a D&D &D game. Like the husband saying, oh, you don't prioritize things in life properly. Like that definitely is not about your DMing style. That said, it is kind of funny. And also, I kind of do feel like the couple sort of pushed it on you a little bit much, being like, we fought about this all week and now we're getting a divorce. <laughs> uh, I think you've been fighting for much longer, my dudes. Yeah, it's a little weird that they mentioned that they've been fighting about that all week and are now getting a divorce. Does imply a little bit of blame, but honestly... It's more likely just clumsy words on their part. They know they were getting a divorce otherwise. They know the marriage was going down the toilet. This is entirely not on OP and absolutely on the couple not being able to keep their private lives in check when they were at the D&D &D table. Which, to be fair to them, is actually quite hard if it's that bad. So, But it does make for a good joke with your friends when they want to tell you that you're a bad DM. So, you know, there's that. DM's partner acts creepy toward child NPCs without repercussions by Reddit user Jatapai. This story occurred just a couple of days ago and my head is spinning as to how things got so out of control so fast. For context, I was first introduced to D&D &D by a friend about 5 years ago. This friend was my first DM and he ran a campaign that lasted over several years that I generally enjoyed playing in. The group consisted of the DM, his partner, my sibling, their fiancé, my wife, and me. Eventually, I started running a game for the same group of people, but ended the campaign without finishing it due to some of the issues I'll mention below. I have never been a fan of the DM's partner's playstyle, 
as they tend to play characters that are belligerent towards other party members and NPCs alike who use violence as their first option for solving problems. Along with this, the player also brings topics and themes into their backstory and roleplay that have made others at the table very uncomfortable. Some of these things have included, but are not limited to, harassing other player characters such as forcing herself between a PC and her girlfriend while they slept, starting an in-game romance with a DMPC who has been repeatedly described as being at the same developmental level as a child, frequent mentions of child including making a PC hail from an orphanage that also doubled as a crime syndicate slash child slavery ring, killing random NPCs in broad daylight and becoming argumentative when they were detained by town guards and taken to jail, using slurs repeatedly despite others telling them to stop. Well, uh, my bingo card is already all folded up. Uh, yeah, they're just hitting all the great hits here. <laughs> Being a murder hobo, getting in the middle of people's romances, doing the whole child violence thing. I mean, what's left? I mean, at least they're not talking down to females. I wouldn't put it past them, though. They did say not limited to. I'm really not excited for where this is going. Many of these incidents have gone unaddressed and sometimes even defended by the DM. Understandably, the rest of the group lost interest in playing with them and we went on to form our own separate group from them, which we have happily played in for the last couple of years. This brings us to the incident that happened recently. The DM and his partner are in the process of filing for divorce, but they are continuing to live together for the foreseeable future, for financial stability and to be available for their children. After a long hiatus from running games, the DM invited my wife and me to join in for a dungeon crawl one-shot with some mutual friends, which we agreed to do. We decided to host because the DM's family was in the process of moving. When the day of the session rolled around, we were both surprised to see that the DM had brought his soon to be ex along for the session. I don't see this ending in disaster whatsoever. This is gonna be fine. Not only are they a well-known problem player at this point, they're currently divorcing. I understand they probably have a certain level of amicability because they're still able to at least live together. However, bringing them to the D&D table when you know they're a problem at the table and you already have that tension is probably not the wisest move and not the most considerate thing for the other players. Yeah, and just speaking from personal experience, and I'm not trying to judge them or whatever, but I did nanny for a family where the husband and wife were getting divorced and still living together for the kids. And trust me, that was the worst possible idea because they basically just enabled each other because they both wanted something out of the situation. Everybody else got caught in the middle of their problems. And I kind of feel like that's what's going to happen here. If you're going to get a divorce, just get the divorce and separate yourselves. It's best for everybody. Sometimes we can't help but have our problems spill out into D&D. This one absolutely could have been avoided. And it's especially bad for the other players because it's someone else's relationship slash marital problems being brought to the table, which is always extra messy. I sort of get the feeling that this couple is trying to project this, oh no, everything's fine, we're totally friends, everything's great. And it's not. Things turn bad quickly after starting the session. While making preparations for our descent into the dungeon, the DM's partner's character propositioned two child beggars to accompany them into the dungeon in exchange for some of the loot they would get. The rest of us were immediately uncomfortable. My wife made an in-character comment to the children along the lines of, and that, kids, is an example of a predator. The rest of us laughed, which we hoped would put a stop to it before it went any further. It did not. Instead, the DM's partner doubled down triple down and quadruple down on their decision to take the two children into a dangerous dungeon where the DM made it clear that the chances of death were high. The rest of the group expressed our discomfort with this decision in several different ways throughout the session, both in-game and above game, but the DM allowed it anyway. To make matters worse, the player justified their decision by saying, haven't you ever heard of grooming? As if it was an acceptable thing to do. Well, that person just said the quiet part out loud. Yeah, we've all heard of grooming, but I think our perspective of it is a bit different to this problem players. It's almost like they think that grooming is a positive thing. I shudder to think what their childhood was like. Oh my goodness, this is horrifying. You're just literally saying, oh, we're going to groom them. Cool. It's almost like a perspective of anything I can do and benefits me is fine. 
assuming that this is something they want, which it clearly is. Sounds like somebody may be devoid of any capacity of empathy or seeing things from another perspective. Either way, it's messed up. I think we can all agree on that. The DM defended this decision by saying that while the children wouldn't do anything that would put themselves in obvious danger, they would go along with this situation because it would potentially mean getting more money than they had ever seen before. At this point, my wife was fuming and made an excuse to leave the session before she blew up on them. I wanted to do the same, but I was too in shock to do or say anything. Eventually, the session wrapped up and my wife returned. We informed her what happened over the rest of the dungeon crawl and the loot we managed to find. The second she walked in, the DM's partner exclaimed, See? Grooming works! WTF! We are both disgusted with this player's continued and repeated violation of other people's boundaries, as well as the DM's failure to consider the safety of other players at the table in favour of including his soon-to-be ex in the game. Needless to say, we will not be accepting an invitation to play with them anytime soon. Well, OP's wife made the correct decision and walked away. I do feel bad for both of them because it's not like they could just up and leave since it was literally at their house. To me, I would feel a little bit like my house had been kind of violated because my house is my safe space. And then having somebody doing stuff in my house that I'm not okay with, like, I feel really bad for them. Yeah, I think she would have been well within her rights to call an end to a session and kick them both out there and then. Alternatively, this is one of the situations where it is acceptable to initiate PvP. I personally would have said, no, you're not bringing the children into the dungeon and fought them over it. Yeah, there's a lot of things, but I get you're in an awkward situation. Everybody's uncomfortable. And again, I'm not judging, but I'm just saying if this person had a history and the DM had a history of enabling this person, why are they agreeing to a game with this DM anyway? It doesn't sound like they're having that much fun. Actually, I'm kind of really concerned about the DM here as well. Their partner clearly has a big pattern of this kind of behavior and they are enabling it at every turn. So either they're aware of it and allow it or they're complicit in it in some way. The DM here almost seems as disturbing as their partner. I wouldn't be comfortable around either of them going forward. I mean, I would understand that the DM wants to divorce this person given that they're a creep and a weirdo, but that doesn't seem to be the reason that they're getting a divorce, which is disturbing, really. Yeah, I agree. I don't think the creepy behavior here is the problem in this marriage somehow. You roll a natural five and accidentally break your entire magic bow. I read it user Earth Seraph Edna. I joined a Pathfinder 2E game starting at 11th with a free archetype and ancestry paragon. It was a homebrew setting. We had to help the fairy summer court engage spring, autumn, and winter. I created an archer fighter. We were entitled to an 11th level item. I picked a plus two resilient explorer's clothing. I spent 2,850 gold pieces on a plus two striking longbow with astral and flaming runes and a greater phantasmal doorknob. During the first two sessions, no PC ever rolled a critical failure on the attack roll, in part due to hero points, which I'm fairly certain that some enemies did. In the middle of the third session, an ancient white dragon attacked the festival from the sky. I acted first and launched a felling strike. Critical hit. The dragon's flight was shut down. The flaming rune generated persistent damage that would constantly trigger its fire weakness, 15, and its greater phantasmal doorknob automatically blinded it. It was epic and satisfying. I used my final action on a vanilla longbow strike. Due to the natural 5 and minus 5 MAP, I rolled a critical failure. I elected against re-rolling it with the hero point because it was not worth it. The GM declared that my character accidentally broke their entire magic bow. The GM read that dry firing a bow breaks it. Forgetting to knock an arrow and thus dry firing the bow seems like something that would happen in a critical failure. I protested. I said that it was arbitrary and unfair that it would be patently absurd for the master archer to commit such a mistake and that enemies previously rolled critical failures on attacks to no ill effect. The GM replied by saying that RPGs are about telling interesting stories and that highs need to be balanced by lows. The GM said that the rules empower the GM to declare what happens on a critical failure. And no, that's not quite right. I protested further, 
but the GM either booted me from the Discord server or deleted it outright. How could this have been better handled? See, I'm a big fan of consequences for critical failures. However, this is extreme. Usually a critical failure might mean the arrow would fly off and hit a nearby player. If they were in the path or near the enemy or somewhere where it could conceivably go wrong and hit them. Something like that is perfectly reasonable consequences for a critical failure. Breaking a magical item which should be unbreakable is not a good way to handle this. Maybe you could have had, oh, the bow de-strings and you got to spend a turn restringing it. Maybe that would have been better, but to permanently break something over this? Feels like the DM was just looking for an excuse to nerf you after that rather large attack on the dragon. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I really think that the DM was just salty about the fact that they got the jump on the dragon and got the critical and were capitalizing on the fire weakness and all that. So yeah, I agree. I think you could have done it. Oh, the bowstring broke, but OP's right. A master archer would not dry fire a bow. They wouldn't, oh, I forgot to knock an arrow. Who does that? Maybe a level one, but in a level 11? No. Yeah, 100% agreed. This DM was salty over what you just did to their dragon in turn one. And I can appreciate that to some level. When you're a DM and you get to play a dragon, they're a lot of fun to play. Although this just feels like petty revenge from the DM. Not cool. It's okay to have consequences for natural ones, but to make them that dire is discouraging to player agency and takes all the fun out of playing because you don't get to then have the items that help make your player as fun to play. Hey, Hugh. Yes, man. Why did the halfling dump his warforged girlfriend? I don't know. Why did he? She was too high maintenance. And with that, we have definitely not been two, two kobolds, kobolds in a, a trench coat. coat. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make the necessary sacrifices to Tiamat. We'll see you next time. <laughs>